Hi, Choice Mount Gambia has put together this video to try to give a fair analysis of the fluoride issue. When fluoridation was first introduced in the US after 1945, studies supported fluoridation having reduced the decay rates in young children by around 50%. In subsequent years, toothpaste started having fluoride added to it and this has been shown to harden the teeth and reduce decay. However, communities without fluoride have also started having reduced rates of decay. Now it appears many factors have affected decay rates. Not only more people brushing their teeth regularly, but increased cheese consumption, which has anti-decay properties, and better dental health services. In short, the decay rates have therefore declined primarily with the rise in people's standard of living. This is backed up by this comparison of 14 countries that do not fluoridate with four countries that do. Since 2005, just about every one of these countries averages one cavity per child of tooth decay. In Australia, the rates of tooth decay have also dropped since 1977, that's the grey areas, to 1987, which is the white areas. This has occurred not just for the cities which fluoridate, but also Brisbane, which does not fluoridate its water. Here is a graph of the states of the USA. Each is correlated with its amount of fluoridated water. It's a curved dark line. It goes from a Hawaii with zero fluoridated water on the left up to Washington with 100% fluoridated water on the right. The next line to look at is the pink line. It's a graph of low income families with excellent teeth. Basically a flat line near the 60% mark. Then there is a red graph line of the high income families with excellent teeth. This line is flat, around the 80% mark. Now if water fluoridation prevented tooth decay, we would expect both the pink line and the red line to be curving similar to the amount of fluoridated water, but they don't. So the conclusion is that the standard of living affects our teeth more than any other issue, and our governments should address that issue. Over the last 50 years, as different communities have debated whether to fluoridate their water or not, many claims about side effects have been made. These are the ones that can be documented. The last word on the fluoridation issue belongs to Dr. Arvid Carlson, pharmacologist and Nobel Prize winner for medicine. This is against all principles of modern, modern pharmacology. It's really obsolete. There's no doubt about that. And uh, I think people, uh, those nations who are using it, should be feel ashamed of themselves. And remember, Mount Gambia is one of the few cities in the world that lives above its water catchment area. So if we were to have fluoride in our water, some of it will eventually soak down into the aquifer and get into the Blue Lake. Over time this will build up and therefore our community should know if the state government has done any detailed research on the results of a possible fluoride build up. For our health's sake, don't fluoridate the lake.